Hello everyone and welcome to another tutorial in the GoTo Shell series. In this series we'll discuss tips, tricks, and techniques for shell scripting in five minutes or fewer. Before we begin, first, due to its ubiquity and my experience with it, we're going to use Bash, specifically version 4 and higher. Secondly, I'm not perfect, so if you do spot any errors or mistakes on my part, let me know in the comments or by email and I'll try to get that corrected in the video. Welcome again everyone. Today's lesson is going to be about the shebang line or hashbang. It goes by a couple names. It's the same thing. Uh, we're going to discuss what it is and what it's used for and uh, why it's so necessary. Uh, let me take a quick shot over here to Firefox and look at the article on Wikipedia for it. If you have any questions after this video, I recommend reading this one. Uh, it's actually not that long, surprisingly. On uh, there's not a whole lot of bias in here that I've seen, so feel free to check it out. It'll probably fill in some gaps if I leave any. All right, let's get to the training VM and take a look. You'll notice I've got, I don't know, six or seven files here. They're very simple. Uh, I don't expect this lesson to take long. So let's fire up the timer and start discussing what this thing is and why it's important. So the first thing to note is that the, the extension of a file doesn't mean anything. Uh, a lot of people think it does and in a graphical user interface like if I use this and I go to this training folder and I see these same files up here in my folder if I double click it it'll probably open an editor or something like that well it actually opened terminal editor but either way it, it does something based on the extension but that's a GUI specific thing in command line that, that really doesn't happen and I'll explain more about that in a minute I can show you that I have three different versions of this basic program you know, one doesn't have an extension, one is .pl and one is .sh, but because they all are going to have the same content, they all have this exact same content, they'll all execute using bin bash and they will all give me the same output. So it doesn't matter if it ends in .sh, doesn't matter if it ends in pl, which normally means Perl, it's still going to be interpreted by bash. It doesn't even matter if it has a file extension. So the important part here is that humans need file extensions and it is a good idea if you use .sh for shell scripts and .pl for Perl scripts and rb for ruby and so on and so forth but it's not necessary for the computer the next thing to look at here is that the shebang line is a directive that the program loader uses so when you look at files and you see that they're in this case they're green because they're executable they have this little asterisk by it what that means is I have permitted these files to be executed and when I try to run one a program loader will begin to read the contents of it and the very first thing it will do is try to read the shebang line so let's go ahead and look at this one and we'll see that it's gonna look for these two symbols next to each other the pound symbol and the bang symbol or the exclamation point followed by some path to a program and optionally some arguments that's what a shebang line is you'll notice we can even pass arguments to it so for those that don't know the bash program accepts a dash h to spit out a copy of everything the script is doing so even though all we're doing is setting variables and that would normally not put any output the dash x is going to change that so we will go ahead and run that and there you go it spit out the lines for us okay so one important thing to remember is that it has to be on line number one okay we have a file here that has no shebang line at all when it's completely missing it is up to I don't even know honestly I don't know if bash is somehow giving the program loader a default directive or what but if it's not on if it's missing or it's not on line one it will simply try to execute as bash so you'll see people do this it doesn't have a shebang line sad panda really kind of stinks we can look at test.sh which doesn't have it on line one it's on line two and if we run test.sh it looks like it's working but it's not it's just defaulting to bash looking at test.pl it's going to try to run this is actually a real Perl script print hello world with a new line character it's going to try to run user bin Perl that's what I want it to do but since it's on line number two instead of line number one it won't work I'm going to get an error because rather than run Perl it didn't see the shebang line on line one it assumed it was going to be bash and bash tried to run the print command which 
is a real command over here at user bin print. Okay. Last thing I want to cover is the env command. A lot of people like this. Um, if you look for it, it should always be in user bin env. Um, some people, well, let me just show you the example real fast. Let's say we have um, our basic sh script. Instead of saying bin bash, what if you don't have bash located at bin bash? What if yours is in user bin bash? but your script is written to look in bin bash. Well, user bin env is always supposed to be in user bin env, okay, always. And then you don't have to fully qualify it. You just say the name of the program that you want and it will search your path variable for it. Okay, so whatever's in your path, it will go try to find. Um, I don't really have an opinion on it. Uh, <laughs> You know, it, it's supposed to be useful. You could say Perl, but what happens if you have Perl in your own local libraries? What if you have, you know, your system administrator might expect bin env to find it one way, but your path is different. So it can solve some edge cases, but we're out of time. And frankly, I wouldn't argue about it anyway. If you want to write scripts and you don't need to use env, don't feel obligated. If it does solve an edge case for you and helps with portability with what you're doing, by all means, go ahead. All right, with that, guys, what I really wanted to explain today was two important things. Program loader is what gets invoked to try to find this executable file like env or bin bash. And without it, bash your shell just kind of assumes or the program letter just kind of assumes what's going to happen and assumptions are bad. And the other one is that the shebang directive needs to be on line one. All right. Thanks a lot, guys. If you have any questions, feel free to leave some comments. Uh, if you subscribe, it really does help me get these videos out and get word of mouth going. Uh, thumbs up if you like this. If you don't, that's okay. I purposely do these in short spurts so that if the whole video just sucks, I can redo it. If you provide more information, I can put annotations in. Whatever you guys need, I, I'm doing these for your benefit. So thanks a lot. Have a great day.